Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beginners Free CAD series for version 1. In this chapter, we're going to take our learning to the next level by creating more complex shapes. We'll explore loss and sweeps. These operations are going to use multiple profiles. In the first lesson of this chapter, we'll focus on lofts and learn when and where to use them. So what is lofting? If we want to create a smooth 3D shape like a boat hull, we can use a technique called lofting, which connects a series of shapes into one continuous form. We start by drawing cross sections or profiles. Think of these cross sections as slices of the final shape. The lofting tool then connects these cross sections, filling in the space between. It's like connecting the dots, but with curves. We can adjust how tightly or loosely the shape connects between the cross sections, allowing it to twist or rotate. So here are some examples of some real world objects. That would require a loft. We have a case for rechargeable earbuds and an electric circuit tester. Let's start with the charger. Look at the form with our flow chart. We know that the first step is simplification. One of the questions we may ask ourselves is that the angle of the curvature of the subject, can it be handled with a simple fillet? For example, if we take a cross section through the middle of the subject and extrude it, can we fillet the shape to create the form? On closer inspection, we can see that the curvature is more complex. So the angle doesn't allow for the correct curvature when we apply it to the ends. If we look closely, there's a rise and a fall of curvature as we fill the length of the subject. So we can consider a loft workflow, mimicking the curvature by similar shape profiles, but of different dimensions. Now let's look at the electric circuit tester. Again, we use our flow chart. In this case, it's an assembly made up of multiple parts. By removing the internal components, we're left with the part we need, the casing. The case itself, if we look closely, it can be broken down again. It's a composite object. We can see it's another subject that can be broken down in layers. Working from the top down, we can see the top layer can be a simple extrusion. Cross sections are constant throughout. And looking at it side on in silhouette, we can see it forms a rectangle. This leads to a single profile that can be extruded. However, if we look at the bottom layer, though it has similar shape cross sections throughout its length, the dimensions vary, so it can't be represented accurately with just an extrusion and a fillet. This would require a loft workflow. It's also worth mentioning how to handle the transition between the loft and the extrusion. Understanding the available options in each operation is very useful when it comes to this. The extrude operation or the pad operation can extrude both backwards and forwards at the same time. This allows to embed the extrude into the loft itself or into another operation. In this case, we could create another pad or extrude, use the taper function to match the transition angle from the loft to the extrude, create a sketch upon that for our top layer, and then extrude both backwards and forwards at the same time. This will create the feature that we're looking for. If you're curious about the valley, it's a simple circle pocket, which is applied to the lofted surface. This was ignored at the beginning through the simplification process. We'll get round to creating both these models later. Lofting can be a complex topic. It's governed by a set of important rules. In the next lesson, we'll cover these rules and simple exercises to help us understand how to build lofts so they can accurately represent the shape that you want. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.